Ethnic studies programs have become an uncontroversial fixture of school curriculums across America. But in Tucson, one such program has been a political flashpoint for years, pitting Mexican-American students against conservative lawmakers. A federal court ruling expected in the next few days will decide whether an Arizona law banning that program is unconstitutional. Tucson's Mexican-American Studies program was founded in 1998 and made Mexican-American literature and history classes part of the core curriculum as a way to improve student engagement in a district that's over 60% Hispanic. We asked the students to be critical. We looked at Mayan Aztec history and we shared with students some of the alternative perspectives. At its height, one in five Tucson students in participating schools was taking an MAS course, and they saw a significant boost in standardized test scores. We saw people that weren't the, the typical A-plus students and that were just like really engaged in this class. Many conservatives, though, saw the program as a Trojan horse, designed to allow radical teachers to smuggle anti-American, anti-white sentiments into the state schools. What I'm criticizing is a program in the high schools that, that I believe is openly racist. One of the leading forces against the program was a state senator named John Hoopenthal. The catalyst for his crusade was a visit he made to an MAS classroom in 2010, where he talked to students about the anxieties many white Arizonans felt. I'll be straightforward with you. There's this feeling of threat by a lot of people that their cultural traditions that they felt resulted in the most prosperous, free nation in the world, they feel, they feel <clears throat> under threat that those cultural traditions are at risk of being washed away. Personally, I don't feel disassociated from this country just because of my ethnicity. If you write an essay on people that are historically oppressed and he'll say like, okay, you, you understand what these people are going through, you understand what the concept is, now how can we change it? You know, I started thinking, you know, I'm a Chicana, I ain't gonna be able to graduate, I'm gonna have kids young, I'm a, you know, like that. And then I started coming to these classes and I started seeing like, why am I believing all this? Instead of believing it, I should change it. I just had a really great philosophical problem with that whole construct that they were using that this oppressed oppressor framework has some kind of foundation in reality and that it's useful, I think it's totally worthless. I think it's less than worthless. I think it's toxic. So amidst growing anti-immigrant sentiment, legislators passed a bill to kill the program. The law prohibits courses that promote resentment toward a race or class, are designed for a particular ethnic group, or advocate ethnic solidarity instead of individuality. Hoopenthal became superintendent of Arizona's schools soon after, running on a campaign to quote, stop La Raza, and he wasted no time shutting the program down. Our education's under attack! What do we do? How do I tell my kids that the institution of education respects them for who they are if it doesn't even teach them about who they are? Teachers and students immediately sued the state, charging the law was discriminatory. And now, after years of working its way through the courts, a decision is finally due. But the law has already had a lasting impact. While ethnic studies programs are expanding across the nation, Tucson schools have been left paralyzed. There's misinformation out there that you can't teach anything to do with Mexican-American culture because of the ban on our program, which is just an absolute falsehood. But teachers think that's true. Districts think that's true. And it becomes this like unwritten policy. And that's scary. A decision in favor of the program could change that. But some Tucsonans have already taken matters into their own hands. So this is our underground band book library. We've been protecting it for many years now. We were in Curtis Acosta's class when they walked in with boxes and they actually started taking some of the books. And that was the point where a lot of my classmates were like, this is it. When are we ever going to see these again? 
they said, no, we're not going to let our books get taken. We're, this is our identity. We're not going to let it be boxed up. And uh, they packed these books away in their little backpacks that turned big and heavy. This is history. It's, it's not fake. It's not made up. Like, I know they always talk about us hating the white man and like bloodshed and all that, but that's not what I felt when I read these books. I see people that look like me, like my parents, like my grandparents. I know we went through unfair things, but it doesn't make me hate anybody. It makes me love myself. I would love for the day that we can return these books and uh, they can be taught in the classroom again to our children. Until then, they're here and we're protecting them and taking care of them.